Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. I think we are on tour number eight. It's about, I don't know, May 10th or 11th. I now have Fridays off for my full-time job, so I'll be able to start doing more work in here. Just wanted to give you a few tips as I go through the garden and give you a tour. When you're taking on big projects, there's always that, you know, drive to get everything done as quick as you can. Make sure you take a pause, look at what you've accomplished, appreciate what you've accomplished, but also make sure your number one priority is taking care of the plants you've already started. These have all been fed, they're getting watered, um, they're getting moved up in pots as I need to. This is an experiment back here to just show you what happens if you let plants stay too long in containers. But make sure you take care of everything you started growing. It's real easy to always be focusing on what I got to do next in the garden. And then you can, you know, kind of lose focus on what's growing and you can lose some of your plants. I'm going to come around here. We have a new grand puppy in the family. His name is Tucker. He is full of energy. Hey, Tucker. Starting on this end, I have a bed here that still needs to be set up, but I'm letting that go. I'll probably replace the beam or the uh, board that curved. Tomatoes that I planted. Uh, several weeks back, these are transplants, are doing extremely well. We're going to be uh, bottom pruning these. I'll be talking about why you do that um, and start uh, some light pruning on different plants. It's getting close to that point. They're doing really well. I'm happy with how things are progressing. The fruit plants are looking pretty good. Blueberries are all in. Those are the uh, Arctic kiwis. The leaves came back after um, they were damaged by a frost. But most of the plants are starting to leaf, doing extremely well. I re, uh, not really redesigned, but I made sure that I had a board going through this um, little deck thing right here to make sure that the boards stayed strong. Because what I'm finding is, is with the thinner boards that I used, if I don't have enough uh, two by fours coming down through here, the boards will warp a little bit. But it looks pretty good. I leveled it off have my flowers right in the front. That's lavender. I want to bring in the pollinators. Potatoes over there in the left in the two smaller buckets. And I did set up the green stalk tower, which I want to show you because it's doing really well. Put, set this mostly up if you've been following my videos, you know, with peppers. But they're nice and green. Here's one that's dying off. Not sure why that's happening. But if you have a plant that doesn't do well, but the rest of them are doing okay, Maybe something just happened to that plant. There's nothing to worry about. I'll have to replace that with something probably. But all the other peppers are green, you know, and they look really, really good. I have another bed to set up again. That'll be, you know, coming. Uh, I'll take care of that probably towards the end of the month. We'll see how things go. A lot of people say, well, you just got to dig a hole and put a tomato in the ground. Why are you doing all this complicated stuff? So I did an earth bed. I'll be doing a video on this. This is a, I think maybe 30 feet. This is going to be a hedge of tomatoes and I'll be talking about that in future videos if you want to subscribe. That's a tomatillo in the front. But I just dropped in a bunch of my seed start tomatoes about a foot apart and it'll be a single kind of trellis going through here that I'm going to just weave the tomato vines through coming up this way. I'll show you how I do that. I'm going to extend this out. It's going to come right down here all the way to the end of the garden. Green beans, <coughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> swallowed an insect. Green beans are doing well. Things are starting to chew on the leaves. Probably slugs or snails. I use iron phosphate to take care of that. Dropped in some onions. And what I've learned with this soil, let's see if I can do this. This is mulched, keeps the moisture in, keeps the plants happier, especially uh, your vegetable plants that have lots of surface roots. The soil, the 50-50 mix that I got, dries out really quickly. So I'll be putting mulch down. That's unmulched. You can see that it's dried out already. And when you come over here, it gives you another example of how quickly the top dries out. And when you come over here, if you remove the mulch, it's nice and moist and brown, and this is the same soil. So mulch does really make a difference in helping moisture stay in the beds and allowing the surface roots of your different vegetables to really get what they need. Here's a project that maybe I'll do some of this this weekend, I don't know, but these are going to be raised beds. These are picked up at Tractor Supply, and these are specifically designed right here 
four raised beds and the pricing on them was odd sometimes there was an individual sticker for 79 then there was a sticker for 159 for three which which is what I got them at um, and that's a pretty good deal so it turned out to be maybe fifty five dollars for each of them and by the time you stack some wood although these are just a little bit smaller the price is pretty fair and these will last for a really long time not sure what I'm going to grow in here but I really want to set this garden up as a teaching garden so this is one way that you can make quick raised beds these are fire rings these are used same store these are used to um, just have campfires but you can use them for raised beds they're similar to the window wells except they're complete and they were about forty four dollars I'm gonna be shooting my next video on grow as I grow and I have put different cucumbers and squash in here just to show you what can happen if you let them get too large and just a little bit of preview is when you are starting your cukes your zooks your squash you want to get them into the garden when they're about this size all along the back those are potatoes and every container that's upright I dropped in um, three different varieties of potatoes and I'll be doing updates on that the asparagus is doing pretty well the purple passion came in really nicely so this will be great you know in a year from now two years from now but the uh, Martha Washington did not do well in fact I've dug it up and some of the roots just didn't take so they're coming up in some places I put down some more but I want this whole area to be asparagus so I may have to order more this is the container garden I shot a video on all planted with the peppers two peppers in each of those and you can see how much you can get in a small space using this method Tucker uh, come here <laughs> come here no 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 don't eat that come here there you go stay this e are the transplants of my uh, Swiss chard <laughs> come on stay spinach beets uh, basil two kinds of tomatoes and back there is my why did I forget let me buzz over here make it easy and that's my okra coming right down along that line come on come with me and again two peppers in each of the pots it's about 40 44 peppers great way to conserve space conserve resources and I will put the video in the eye cards of this so I have a couple more beds to go to fill I'm gonna be doing that this weekend filled these this week all the way down waiting on getting my cattle panel to set up my arch um, so that I can have a trellis but things look pretty decent cabbages kales these are tomatoes I did start back there. They're All America Selections winners. Be doing videos on that. But things are coming along nicely. And I think right in there is Artwork Broccoli. And it's starting to form the head. But in Maryland Zone 7, I always have trouble because the heat comes pretty quick. And then they go right to flower. So every year I try and grow broccoli and cauliflower. Uh, early spring they always flower before they form nice heads but I'll give it a try again kale on the front red Russian kale on the back and let's let's end with this so that's red Russian kale that I just seed started this year bought them outside they're doing pretty well and when you come over here this is red Russian kale that overwintered I brought from my other garden and you can see the flowers the flower heads and this is really going to seed it's a biennial so if they overwinter in your area and they're pretty hardy you can get nice low temperatures our temperatures get down to zero so they can take the freeze the next year they're going to come back and they're going to flower and you can eat these just harvest them put them right into your salad they're delicious they're like tiny little broccolis the leaves are still good and you can see all the flower heads that are going to come back these will um, send out seed pods you can collect them here you go tuck tucker have some kale they'll produce hundreds of seed pods thousands of seeds so you can collect them and you can have plenty for your garden in the future hope you enjoyed the video please subscribe to my channel I'm going to show you how I transform this entire area take care of all the vegetables that have started putting in new vegetables 
Um, and now is the time to start thinking about disease management. I showed you the slugs that are coming. I'm going to use iron phosphate to take care of that. Start looking for clues in your garden. Start thinking about the sprays you want to use and have a plan in place. And try and start about two weeks early before those disease and problems come into your garden. And I know you may not know that now, but keep a journal so next year you know when the problems show up. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. Thanks for watching.